Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you on this Sunday. Um, I was gonna do a live stream earlier today, but I had my son this weekend, and um, you know, he, he was being fussy at the time, and he wasn't allowing me to um do the live stream at the time. So I think he had a he woke up from a nap. I think he had a bad dream or something like that. So I had to, you know, do the fatherly thing. So I had to. He had to. He wanted, you know, to be. He wanted to color up, color it up. So, you know, that's that uh that toddler thing. So. But uh, yeah, I just dropped them off, so I just want to do this quick video. Um, so we were talking about KJ Wright. We've been talking about KJ Wright since the signing of Demonte Kazee and and um, Keanu Neal. Now KJ Wright, as you know, was drafted by the Seattle Seahawks back in 2011. He's played with them his whole career. Uh, we know he's a Pro Bowl player. He's six four, two hundred and forty six pounds. Um, he has over 940-something tackles in his career, over 50 pass deflections and things of that nature. So um, he's definitely a guy that the Cowboys are looking at. Um, there has definitely been talks on both sides of the fence between his agent and the Dallas Cowboys. Um, as you guys know, everybody's been talking about it, of course, um, that, you know, Cowboys is one of his dream teams. Now, you know, a lot of players would like to play for the Dallas Cowboys. I, I don't know if that's just because of what it is or if it, they, they grew up fans of the team, whatever the situation is. Um, I know my reasons if I was to, but that would be different than, you know, somebody else, obviously. But um, hopefully we'll hear something this week. Like I said, today is Sunday. Normally transactions don't happen on the weekend normally unless they were already in the works. Um, that's normally how that goes. But um Tomorrow being a business day, Monday, uh, maybe we'll hear something from from from, the, from either side. Now, the issue that, not necessarily issue, but what was talked about between KJ Wright and the Cowboys from what um, the information that's out there from sources that are out there um, close to the Dallas Cowboys are that, um, like I said, both sides have been in discussions, but the um, KJ's camp kind of wants a multi-year deal, like a two-year deal. The Cowboys were thinking more of a one-year deal. But I think that they could do a two-year deal. Um, that way they can stretch whatever money they give him out. Like if they say, for instance, if they give him like a five, six million dollar deal, if you stretch that between um, two seasons, that's fine. You can do that. Um, you got enough space to do that. Now, where does KJ Wright fit on this Dallas Cowboys defense? Now, I don't doubt that anybody on that Cowboys brass, anybody that works for that organization, I doubt that anybody says, oh, well, we don't want K.J. Wright. We don't need K.J. Wright on this team. Um, you know, you've seen what he's done with the Legion of Boom. You know, he he knows Dan Quinn's scheme. You know, he's he knows Chris Richard. He knows, you know, all these coaches that played under that umbrella, if you will. Um, and Dan Quinn being being one of him, them, and Dan Quinn being now the defensive coordinator for Dallas Cowboys, kind of makes sense for KJ Wright because it's a system that he fits in, and he already knows that because he even said it himself. He's like, you know, I feel like it's a good fit for me. Now, where would the Cowboys fit him in? Now, would that mean that Jalen Smith would have limited amount of reps? Uh, would they share reps? How would they do that? Like, who would be the starter? Would they bring in um, K.J. Wright as a rotational guy since he's an older veteran? He is 31 years old. But granted, there's no doubt that he's not still dynamic because I really think that he's still dynamic enough to go out there and do what he needs to do. But if you use him as a rotation, I think that it's fine because that way you're saving risks of in injury. Um, you're keeping guys fresh. And if something happens to Jalen or Lant Van Der Esch that get injured, you can plug him right up in there. So... Um, in that aspect, you can do that, and then you can play more of a box type of guy with Keanu Neal, which is normally what he does anyway. He could be that box safety. Now, um, you could do a lot of different hybrid things if you bring KJ Wright in because you can have him in the base. You can bring Keanu Neal in as that as that box safety, or when when you're doing different formations, you can slide him down a linebacker, and one of the other guys, one of the other linebackers, goes out, you know, catches their breath on the side. I just think it's a win-win for all. And real quick about Jalen Smith, I know a lot of you guys are down on him and saying he sucks and this and that. Let's not forget what he's done before when he's gotten to the team. We understand the situation that ensued with him um, in the uh, bowl game when he, you know, tore his knee up and had nerve damage and ended up having drop foot. We know that drop foot's not going to go away. We know that he's 100% from the injury, 
but that, that nerve damage is still there. So we know that his cutting ability is not as great as it would have been prior to his injury. So comments have to tell you that Mike Nolan, when he came in here switching Jalen Smith's uh, position, trying to make him play in coverage, that's not what he does. You need to have him on that playing um, sideline to sideline, catching these guys running up the middle and things of that nature, being that protector, um, that extra person, linebacker. That's what linebacker is. They back up the line, which is the defensive line, as, as we're talking about. So, you know, it is what it is. But I think that Jalen Smith is going to play much better in this Dan Quinn scheme because it fits what he does best. We've seen him play better in Rod Marinelli's system. We play, we've seen all these guys that were here before play better in Rod Marinelli's system. So at the end of the day, I just feel like just, just go in there and just let them do them. Um, let's, let's withhold all this hate and trying to get rid of these guys. Because again, you get rid of them and then you realize that it wasn't really them that was the issue. It was what they were doing coach coaching wise that was the problem. So I just look at it like that. You know, just 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 have faith. Don't look at it from a negative standpoint all the time and let's just think positive. So um let me know what you got. I know you guys want KJ right on, you know, but let me know what you guys think in the comment box about that. Um, hopefully we can get him in this week. If not, I guess we'll be drafting some linebackers. I'm still working on my mock drafts. I know draft is coming up less than four weeks away. Things go by fast. It's like, wow, I just looked at the, the calendar. I was like, Jesus, like, we already in this thing. We in this thing. We're getting ready for OTA. I'm not OTAs. Um, um, uh, uh yeah, 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 OTAs and stuff like that. And then, then next thing you know, it'll be mini camp, and they'll be hopefully heading for Oxnard. Uh, I would love to go this year because they always go to Oxnard on my birthday. Always on my birthday. But anyway, um, let me know what you guys think about the KJ Wright thing. Hopefully we can get him. If not, uh, Cowboys got to figure some things out. But I know everybody wants them. So um, kick the tires on it. Why not? It, it's a win-win. So it is what it is. Um, in the meantime, between time, it's your boy YouTube Blue. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's your boy YouTube Blue. Always keeping it real. Peace out.